everyone, welcome back to the stethoscope. Today in this video, we are diving deep into some juicy biology practice questions that will supercharge your preparation. But before we get started, let me mention that biology is taking the spotlight this year with 23 questions. 23, that means that mastering biology is now more crucial than ever. Let's start practicing questions and these aren't the past I met questions. Okay, so our first question says that which of the following statements about genetic variation are correct? Here we've got a list of four statements and we are asked which pair of these statements are correct. Let's look at them one by one. So our statement number one is all about asexual reproduction and whether it produces genetic variation. Hopefully you remember from your studies that asexual reproduction produces the least amount of genetic variation. And actually the idea stating that this always produces genetic variation is wrong. So we can go ahead and mark this incorrect. We can then look at statement number two, gamete production is the only possible source of genetic variation in sexual reproduction. Again, this one is false actually. In sexual reproduction, you can have mutations happening in the DNA, which then create genetic variation not associated with the initial production of the gametes. So statement number two is also incorrect. If you look at the statement number 3, the environment can cause genetic variation, well, this statement seems to make sense. If you get exposed to many UV radiations or you sit under x-rays, big x-ray machines and sat there for 2 years or 3 years, so you can expect to have some mutations in your cells and as a result, genetic variation in those cells. So, therefore, environment can lead to genetic variation. And finally, statement number four that says that mutation can produce genetic variation. So yes, absolutely, this one is one of the major drivers of evolution. And this one is correct. And it's important to remember as well. So looking to our answer choices, we, uh, we can clearly say that only three and four are correct. Okay, so let's move on question number two. So this question is using tables stating that select the correct answer from the other table. So let's look at this, what we have here. Okay, so we have three different cells P, Q and R that have different relative quantities of nuclear DNA. So Q has a double P and R has nothing. So essentially the only cell at this level that has no nuclear DNA is red blood cell. Remember that red blood cells are just a bag of hemoglobin that don't have any internal organelles possessing nucleus. So we know that R is a red blood cell. So here in the options, we have the possibility of option B stating that R is a red blood cell or another possibility is option D because option D is stating R as enucleated X cell because this one is of those cases where you make clones like Dolly dolly the sheep if you remember because you obviously take out the nucleus from the egg and then essentially what you get is the nucleus from a deployed body cell and then you fuse those together so yeah this is a like sort of more artificial way of having a cell with which has no nuclear dna so that one can obviously be the case now let's go with p so P has only half amount of nuclear DNA compared to Q. So basically what's going on here is that P would basically be the N and Q will be 2N. The N being the haploid and the haploid number of chromosome is essentially found in gamete whereas the diploid number of chromosome we have double the amount of nuclear DNA which is found in any body cell. So we know that P is going to be a gamete. So the answer option we have gamete is option A. And as we know that gamete itself is an umbrella term for sperm cells and egg cells, so yes, you have option C and D as well. And then we know that Q is just any body cell, so we can just go ahead and check the answer options. So option A is saying that Q can be a cheek cell, that's definitely fine because that's a part of your body. Then we have enucleated egg cell, so I've already explained this term. Then I have adult stem cell, so that would be fine. For example, if you have um, bone marrow that produces the very different type of blood cells, so that's fine. Then we have nerve cells, that's also fine. And then a fertilized egg cell that would also be deployed and therefore considered a body cell. So the one that overlaps all three is going to be option D and that is the correct answer. 
Now moving towards our next question that's about stem cells where we have given three statements and we are asked to pick which one or which combination is correct and it's particularly comparing stem cells from an embryo to stem cells derived from the bone marrow in other words embryonic stem cells versus adult stem cells so we can take a look on the statements one by one statement number one is saying that both of these stem cells can divide producing daughter cell that'll be correct but each daughter cell will contain one haploid copy of donor's genome so that about the haploid and it's it's a problem here in fact they would contain a diploid copy of the donor genome because the cell has identically replicated itself haploid essentially means that it has half the amount of genetic information and you should remember that only gametes are haploid so option so statement number one is incorrect now if we look at statement number two the stem cells collected from an embryo are able to differentiate into a wider variety of specialized cells than adult bone marrow stem cells so that's absolutely the case a cell within the embryo can develop into any cell in the body if you think about it it has in order to make who you are in comparison a bone marrow stem cell can only really replicate itself and then produce itself constituent blood products it's not going to be able to differentiate into nervous system tissues for example at least without any outside help so in that case number two is correct and finally statement number three that says the use of stem cell therapy to treat a medical condition can increase the risk of a person developing cancer so at this point it's worth remembering what cancer is it's an uncontrolled replication of cells therefore it's easy to see that if you inject someone with a set of stem cells if those stem cells continue to divide we may end up with a cancer on our hands so all in all two and three are correct now moving to our next question that says that which of the following could affect enzyme activity so statement number one says that treating the enzyme with protease before use so enzymes are made up of amino acid chains called peptides so they can denature just like proteins so using protease before use would break the bonds between the amino acids in the enzyme altering its specific shape and resulting in loss of function so it's true Statement number two says that boiling the enzyme before use that would definitely denature any human enzyme changing the shape of active site so that could no longer bind its substrate. So yes, it's true. And then statement number three that says if the enzyme has been warmed from temperature after refrigerating it would go back to its original activity. So this one is incorrect as the enzyme activity will return to normal after being taken out from the fridge. So the correct answer is option B that's one and two only. Okay, so let's move on to our next question that says a sample of DNA contains 32% cytosine which answer shows the percentage of adenine in the same sample. Okay, so you should know that guanine binds with cytosine and thymine binds with adenine and the way I remember is this acronym GCAT like a cat who's a gangster. Anyway, so GC goes together and AT goes together. Anyway, so if there is 32% cytosine then it means that there is also 32% guanine which makes a total of 64% G and C which means there is a remaining 36% of A and T. So 36 divided by 2 is just like we can find out what the A is and it's going to be 18 that should be answer option B. Okay so next question okay so our next question says that to find which statement is or are correct okay for this first statement remember that three base pair codes for one amino acid therefore it would have got 500 base pair which means that 500 divided by 3 and we can get a maximum i agree of 166 amino acids so this statement is correct you can calculate this 500 over 3 so that's around something like 166 amino acids so yes this statement is correct okay so we have our statement number two saying that a liver cell and a mature red blood cell from the same person both have a chromosome number 46 
Okay, so we know about the mature red blood cells that they don't have a nucleus, so we won't have any chromosomes there. So this one is incorrect. And finally, statement number three that says the number of adenine bases in an allele must be the same as number of guanine. Remember, adenine is complementary with thymine, guanine is complementary with cytosine. So this statement is incorrect. Number of adenine must number of adenine bases must be the same number of thymine bases not guanine so only statement number one is correct okay so moving toward our next question so um, this question says that which of the following could have resulted in a high concentration of protein in the urine sample so in a normal ultra filtration process large protein molecules should not be able to pass from the blood into the bowman's capsule there's a fine mesh that's filtrating through because we really don't want any large molecules to escape so there should be no protein molecules in that ultra filtrate at all if there is a protein in the urine it's suggesting a problem in the outer filtration process but nowhere else would have that issue so we can see here that statement one is correct there's a damage to the cell membrane from the blood vessel and the woman capsule it's allowing molecule through that should not be allowed through now because i've just stated that this is purely an ultra filtration issue it's not going to be related to any other aspect so statement two and three are incorrect because they relate to other concepts they reduce rate of active transport and selective reabsorption that's not due with filtration the woman capsule and statement three to do with the collecting duck again not to do with the ultra filtration therefore we can see here that answer option b is only correct because that stating statement number one is only correct now moving towards our next question that's saying mitochondria are the site of aerobic respiration in animal cell a theory of evolution of animal cell states that these mitochondria may once have been aerobic bacteria that were taken into the cytoplasm of a cell in an early ancestor of the animal allowing the cell to gain the ability to respire using oxygen so basically what this thing this whole thing over here is talking about something which is called the endosymbiotic theory so endosymbiotic theory so assuming this theory correct we have to find which of the following statements are true of these aerobic bacteria and human white blood cells so statement number one says that structure of their dna is double helix dna by definition where whether it's from fungi animal cell or plant cell or whatever it's always going to be a double helix so this has to be correct now moving towards statement number two that says that they would both possess a cell wall so certainly bacteria possess a cell wall but animal cell have human white blood cells don't possess this cell wall so this would be incorrect next statement says that uh, they would both possess a nucleus so human cells obviously have nuclei but bacteria don't have nuclei because bacteria basically just have their dna just naked in their looped around so they don't have a nucleus so this is going to be incorrect and then we have statement number four that says they would both possess a cell membrane so yes any living organism have a cell membrane in order to transport and communicate with its external environment so this is going to be correct and the answer here is option a stating one and four only now let's move on to our next question so this is an easy pedigree question which says individual a in the family pedigree below is homozygous dominant so it must be big a and big a and individual b is homozygous recessive for a product particular feature and it says what is the percentage probability of the individual f is homozygous recessive okay so this person over here is homozygous recessive and then it gives two different condition as to what e can be so let's consider this obviously to find out what f could possibly be we need to know what d and e are so d is definitely going to be a heterozygous big a and small a because that's only the possibility it has from getting a and it's big a and the only thing you can get from b is a small a and therefore it will be a big a and small a now let's consider the first one where it says e is a homozygous recessive so it's a homozygous 
this will be small a small a and then let's just quickly cross these you'll get big a small a small a small a so you are gonna get two carriers two homozygous recessive and then we'll look at the percentage probability that individual f is homozygous recessive and as you can see here you have two of four which is going to be 50 percent so now we are left with already a and c the next one is if e is a heterozygous so they have two heterozygous so big a small a big a small a cross these two together and as you can see it's homozygous recessive here is just one out of four and one out of four is 25 percent so it's gonna be option c and this question was pretty straightforward all right so that's a wrap up for today's video on biology practice questions thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next